Whenever I'm alone at home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either, but according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door in his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally, when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They'd give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay?
dress for danger, so I'm told I know just what they mean Gotta be bold, the whole sweet ginger green She's sweeter than soup And Georgia Brown Beats Lulu too When she's back in town Now she can share me like Sister Kate She's a dancing queen Fit for a king Swing sweet ginger green Sister K, she's just a dancing queen. Fit for a king, a swing, sweet ginger, swing, sweet ginger green. Thank you. 
Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. Three eleven eight. Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. Now they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never came for dinner with the family. We never watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn, especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Figured we'd find you in here. I'm going in for a minute, fellas. These guys will wait outside. How long you been dating the lover boys? They're sans people, Jack. Yeah. So now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack, I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Probably won't be seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. I've got to get out today. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie, 
If I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're going to kill me. And not just me. My family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run, and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. They need an inside line at police headquarters. I can't just give them back the money. That's not how the Mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. But I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. Give him my phone number and tell him it's done. Don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack, I... Get the f*** out of my nice cozy barn, Frank. At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride, even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals, and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a bag stuffed with my kids' body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia b****. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? Thank <laughs> you.
Mr. Boyd, there was a man here earlier. He left you this. A man? What man? Who let him on this floor? I don't know. I've never seen him before. I asked him his name, but he just ignored me. He was talking on a big telephone, you know, one of those portables. He gave me this envelope and left. Damn. Okay, let's see about this. Of course, they could have shot them the second they took the photo, but I knew Kendrick and his family were all right. Either way, the message was not that they got out. It meant that I was in. My servitude to the Mafia had begun. I'd only been in my new position five seconds, and I already knew why Kendrick called it a contract. You sound doomed if you call it what it is. A curse. Boyd. Good morning, Jack. I believe you just received my message. Who am I speaking with? Oh, I'm sorry. I forget some people don't recognize my voice. But I assure you, Jack, if I was sitting right there in front of you, you'd have no trouble recognizing me. Like I was a member of your family. Even better than a wife, perhaps. A wife can betray you. No man is immune. I don't talk to people who don't tell me their names. Oh, Jack, don't be so childish. You're too old to run away from strangers. Yes, we both are. And in our old age, friendship becomes rare and all the more precious. But of course, we must work with new people and find out new names. So if you insist, Jack, let us formally meet. Hello, Jack Boyd. I'm Christopher Sand. Wonderful, Mr. Sand. And what is it you do for a living? Oh, you'll soon find out all about that. Well, you'll learn much more than a simple policeman could ever expect. You're a simple policeman no longer, Jack. Don't turn off your phone. You start today. Eight in ten. It's been my go-to principle since my first day on the job. I've got to let my colleagues hush up what they need to, two out of ten times, so that they'll help me with the remaining eight. Eighty out of a hundred, eight hundred out of a thousand, I'm proud of those statistics. It's not so bad for Freeburg, right? But now I just officially became a Mafia whore. I'm supposed to be fearing for my life, for the lives of my wife and children. But the only thing I can think? What's gonna happen to eight and ten?
progress. Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. Nine 